Aloha everybody and welcome to the Hawaii Volcano Watch Report. My name is Charles and I am your host. So, we're going to start this first live uh, edition. Well, it's not the first live edition, but we're going to start this live edition of the Hawaii Volcano Watch Report by first taking a look at the Kilauea Volcano. Secondly, we will then take a look at the Mount Aloha because, of course, we've got some interesting things there. And, of course, after the end of this particular update news report, don't forget to join us on the secondary stream, which is the Kilauea uh, live monitoring of the current Kilauea eruption. And, of course, that stream will restart after we conclude this edition of the Hawaii Volcano Watch Report update. So... Moving on, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to take a look at the Kilauea uh, update that was posted by the USGS today, Friday, March 19th, 2021 at 7.54 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time. Their basic observations on the summit show that the most recent sulfur dioxide emission rates measured on March 18th was 700 tons per day. This is an elevated rate compared to the rates in the months before the eruption started on December 20th, which was less than 100 tons per day. But it's still lower than the rates that were recorded during the pre-2018 lava lake, which was around 5,000 tons per day. Now the summit tilt meters recorded minor inflationary tilt over the past day as a part of a deflation-inflation event cycle. Seismicity remained stable with elevated tremor compared to observations before the eruption. Looking at the East Rift Zone, the geodetic monitors indicated that the summit and upper portion of the East Rift Zone between the summit and Pu'o'o Crater have stabilized after contracting by several centimeters in the early days of the ongoing eruption. Refilling of the East Rift Zone continues at rates similar to before the December 2020 eruption. SO2 and H2S emissions from Pu'o'o were still below instrumental detection levels when measured on January 7th. So real quick, I want to point out something there that we just read. They state that the refilling of the East Rift Zone continues at rates similar to before the December 2020 eruption. Meaning that before the eruption up at the Kilauea uh, summit in the Halemaumau crater began on December 20th, um, we were seeing a inflationary trend in the East Rift Zone traveling from the upper into the middle uh, Rift Zone areas. The middle Rift Zone is located between the Pu'u'o crater and the Highway 130 area in Pahoa. Now, when the eruption up at the summit began on December 20th, and we saw the upper uh, area of the rift zone contract by several centimeters, uh, we, there was a um, deflation or stabilization in the inflation of the Middle East rift zone. Uh, and that has pretty much remained, you know, stable and not changing or if just deflating slightly since then. However, they've recently changed the wording here to indicate that that um, trend is now reversing itself and we are beginning to see inflation again at similar rates uh, as be, or sim similar rates as to before the December 20, uh, 2020 eruption of Kilauea in those areas. So we need to keep a uh, uh, a watchful eye on those areas now as well since things are returning to an inflationary state across the whole of the Kilauea volcano. Moving on, let's take a uh, observational look at the Halemaumau lava lake itself. With USGS continuing to state that lava infusion from the west vent continues to supply the lava lake within the Halemaumau crater. The main section of the west vent is consistently infusing lava through two crusted over channels and submerged inlets to the lake. Lava circulation and intermittent foundering of thin crust continue in the active west or excuse me <clears throat> in the active western portion of the lava lake. The total depth of this lake is approximately 222 meters or 728 feet, which was recorded this morning by a continuous laser rangefinder on the active western portion of the lava lake. Stagnant and solidified lava crust covered the eastern portion of the lava lake and is slowly growing westward around the main island, apparently preventing any lateral movement of this island 
or any of the smaller enclosed islands. Rangefinder measurements and visual observations on March 15th indicate that the eastern portion of the lava lake is approximately 5 meters or 16 feet lower than the active western portion. And that will pretty much sum up the activity for Kilauea. Just looking over the rest of the report and there is nothing of any notable there. So real quick before we move on, I do want to now take y'all over to the um, tilt meters and some of these graphs. I want to point out a few things over here. As you can see by the two day summit tilt meter, we are now currently in an inflationary trend except for here just recently in the last hour or so there has been a small dip or a deflation in the tilt reading however as over the seven day period you can see that the deflation inflation cycles that continue to go up and down up and down over a period of the last seven days and this is what is referred to as a di event you see the tilt go up you see the tilt go down you see the tilt go up and we can see that 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 is pretty you know erratic over the last seven days but when we look at the data stretched out even further over a 30-day period we ultimately can see the general trend of what we are uh, witnessing in the, the the inflation deflation of the volcano now usgs reports that generally overall we see we're seeing an inflationary trend up on the summit and by looking at the 30-day map we can see that um, right now that inflationary trend is pretty much stabilized and we're not really seeing an upward inflation or a downward deflation of the summit it's pretty much remaining right where it is fluctuating a little bit here and there up and down over the days as time moves along but the overall 30-day average of inflation or deflation seems to be relatively stable or null which is kind of interesting um, now what I want to do is I want to show you something else too. Uh, there's been in the live monitoring stream I see talk about you know the the gas emissions coming out and how sometimes it looks more and sometimes how it looks less and the color changes and stuff like that. But I wanted to point out a little a little something. If we look at the gas chart and we look here um, in the middle of the chart and we see the the date range from March 2nd to uh, March 5th and we've got those three dots which are up there in the higher range. If we look at that over on the uh, <clears throat> excuse me on the lava lake depth in that same range we can see that as we had an increase in the emissions we also had an increase in the depth of the lava lake by at least what looks like oh two or three meters uh, in that uh, three day period which is kind of interesting so this is how we tie all this information together and why all these uh, graphs and charts and stuff are included in the monitoring stream that will continue after this update uh, because we can see correlations in these data and this gives us trends and it's the trends that we use to forecast or uh, try to interpret what we're seeing in the volcano's activity itself but so that pretty much covers it for now with the, the Kilauea volcano, I want to move over and talk about the Mauna Loa volcano because we have some things happening over there. So first what we're going to do is the same as we do for the Kilauea, we are going to uh, take a look at the USGS report and see what they have to say and then we will look at some of the information and, uh, and discuss. So. USGS reported yesterday, Thursday, March 18th, 2021 at 3.46 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time um, that their current observations uh, have recorded over 40 earthquakes beneath the upper, uh, and I hope I get this right, the upper uh, Kaoiki uh, seismic zone and about 21 kilo or kilo, yeah, <clears throat> let's try that. Again, <laughs> on March 18th, 2021, the USGS Geological Survey's uh, Hawaii Volcano Observatory has recorded over 40 earthquakes beneath the upper Kaoiki seismic zone, about 21 kilometers or 13 miles west northwest of the volcano. So, I'm going to show you where that is because this is what we're going to be talking about when it comes to the Kilauea, or excuse me, the Mauna Loa volcano. This is the area right here that they're talking about. 
and you can see to the left there is the Mauna Loa Summit Caldera and down to the uh, bottom right is Kilauea. So moving on. These earthquakes are occurring in a cluster of about two kilometers or one mile wide and uh, 0 0.5 to 6 kilometers or 0 0.5 to 4 miles below the surface. The largest event in the sequence so far was a magnitude of 3.5 uh, was a magnitude 3.5 earthquake with the bulk of the events being less than two uh, a magnitude 2 and not widely reported by any residents. Reported felt events were described as weak shaking with a maximum intensity of 2 on the modified Mercalli intensity scale. Now, clustering of shallow earthquakes in this region does not mean an eruption is imminent. HVO, <clears throat> HVO has recorded shallow earthquakes in this area for many decades across several eruptive cycles on both Kilauea and Mauna Loa. These, uh, these earthquakes do not show any signs of magmatic involvement and are part of a normal readjustment uh, of the volcano due to changing stresses within it. Uh, and those changing stresses would be the inflation and deflation uh, and the filling of the shallow magma storage chamber. Just to point out, that is the stresses that they would be referring to. Uh, other monitoring data streams for Kilauea and Mauna Loa, including ground deformation, gas, and imagery, show no signs of increased activity. Now, HVO continues to closely monitor geologic changes, seismicity, deformation, and gas emissions at Kilauea and Mount Oloa volcanoes, and HVO will issue any additional uh, messages and alert level changes as warranted by changing activity. Okay, nicely said, and all that by USGS. Now, y'all know that I normally uh, agree with USGS on a lot of things. However, there are times that I don't agree with them. Uh, there has been a, a few of those times with the 2018 eruption. Uh, there has, you know, been uh, some things with the, uh, the the water lake that was in the Halimawa crater prior to the uh, December, tw uh, December 20, 2020 eruption. Uh, but that's that. That's what happens. Sometimes one person says one thing. Sometimes, you know, some, one person says another, and those two things may not necessarily agree. Doesn't mean each other is wrong. Doesn't mean each other is right either. However, one thing I have learned so far by watching the Kilauea volcano, and let me just clarify for transparency, I have not witnessed or experienced a Mauna Loa eruption since I've been here. It hasn't erupted since I've, I've moved here to Hawaii. However, Kilauea has erupted twice now. Well, actually, Kilauea was erupting when I moved here, so it's technically three eruptions uh, that I witnessed. The end of the first one, um, which was the Pu'u'u'u, uh, constantly flowing down to the ocean. Uh, so I didn't get to see that started, but I did get to see it end. And then, of course, the 2018 one that took out Leilani and Kapoho and all the other areas. And, of course, now this third one, which is a Kilauea uh, uh, summit caldera eruption. So, one thing that I've noticed, though, in these two last two eruptions that I witnessed is that they always were pre, uh, you know, um, preceded by cluster quakes. In 2018, uh, for Kilauea, we saw cluster quakes move from the summit down the, the East Rift Zone, all the way down into the middle of Leilani, uh, past Leilani a little bit, and then stop. A couple days later, we had lava. Okay. Uh, in 2000, December 20th, 2020, well, excuse me, in December of 2020, uh, a few days prior, I think, it was about, I think it was four days, so I think it was maybe the 16th or maybe the 15th of December, um, there was a, a, a group of cluster quakes, and we'll show you here on, on the map. Uh, here's the caldera. So those cluster quakes were basically to the left and slightly north of, of the Kilauea caldera and the Halimamo crater right there. Um, and these quake cluster quakes occurred very shortly. I think it was a period of a day. Uh, there was, I don't know how many, there was uh, at least 50, 60 of them or something like that. I made, of course, comment that this is something we should watch, that, you know, up there it could be, you know, a pending eruption coming soon, who knows, blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, poof, December 20th, you know, we, we lose the water lake due to uh, a new eruption at the Kilauea summit. So, so I have to ask myself that question about these cluster quakes, even though, USGS says this is all par for the course. I still have to say, well, the last two eruptive events that I witnessed on Kilauea, you know, had cluster quakes preceding those events. 
So now I have to ask myself, is this the same type of signal? And even though USGS says it's not, and they're probably right, because I think they probably do know a little bit more than me, but I'm really good at, at, at putting connections together and finding patterns and data and things of that nature. And um, one thing I've also noticed as well is the 2018 eruption and this 2020 eruption, um, they say they're looking at ground deformation, increases in, in emission rates and things like that uh, as part of the, the uh, data points in order to uh, understand whether uh, eruptive activity may be coming you know, to the mountains, etc. However, in both these two eruptions, there was no changes in that data prior to the, the uh, lava emerging on the surface. So uh, I don't know if I would necessarily rely on that alone saying, hey, okay, we don't have no emission changes, uh, we're not seeing any major inflation, um, et cetera, you know, so all these cluster quakes or this quake activity don't mean anything. I don't know if I would necessarily agree with that. And just to point out, which I found very, very interesting in, in one of the update reports I've read and some of the other information, is, is USGS basically is saying that these cluster quakes are, are just adjustments, you know, stress adjustments, you know, and they've seen them over the last decades, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, we, we have that type of activity. Um, but then they go on to say that also this is, would be a good time for everybody to review their, their volcano preparedness, you know, uh, plans and, and list and, you know, supplies and stuff like that. <laughs> so I don't understand. <laughs> uh, when someone says, oh, don't worry, but oh, be prepared, you know, it makes you wonder if, if maybe they're not sharing all the information. And I do know that USGS don't publish everything that they know, uh, just, I guess, the, the highlights uh, or the main points, etc. So, Mount Loa is a very active volcano. It still is. It always, probably will be for, for, you know, a very, very long time as well. Um, it's just, it's a little bit more sleepy than Kilauea, I think, it, when you look at the historical eruptions um, and, you know, um, um, uh, frequencies and things like that in nature. Uh, but I do believe that Mount Loa is um, charging. I do believe that uh, it is pressurizing. Uh, we can see, and actually, let's go take a quick look at that real quick, uh, if I can bring it up. Uh, here in this, this image, you hear in the bottom left, these, these blue and green lines. This is the inflation and deflation tilt meters. Uh, same thing that we look at over on, on Kilauea, but we have two uh, located up on the summit of Mount Loa. And if you, you can see right here in this uh, graph is that back over on the 313, the left side of the graph, the, 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 the amount of change uh, in deflection of deflation and inflation was minor or smaller of a range compared to what we're seeing here uh, at the right hand of the graph. We're seeing bigger ranges of, of change in, of inflation and deflation and longer periods of this occurring as well. And if you look from the left to the right, you can see that there's an upward trend uh, in that, that data as well, showing that, that, that Mount Loa is on an inflation trend um, overall. So it is, it is charging. It's as simple as that. It is charging. So, so my advice to everybody out there that it may be watching this that lives here on the Big Island, of course, you know, we've lived with the volcanoes. Some of you have been here longer than I have. Um, we pretty much know what to do to handle it. Always be ready. Uh, no matter where you live, you should always be prepared for, for weather events and natural events and stuff like that because you really can't, you know, predict these things. You can forecast when things are going to be more probable, you know, and, and that's what I'm basically saying here is I think it's more probable that Mauna Loa will erupt sooner versus later. And that, that's the way I'm going to put that. And you know what? That's also the way I think I'm going to leave this uh, particular uh, update of the Hawaii Volcano Watch Report. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click that bell icon if you haven't already and select all notifications. You can also help support the channel if you want over in the live stream uh, that will be coming up after the end of this report. Uh, you can do that through Super Chat, Super Stickers. You can also click that donation link or check out our merch store over at Redbubble. Lots of ways you can help uh, you know, the channel. Um, keep the stream going, etc. And uh, that will do it. Uh, my name is Charles. I've been your host. And I want to say mahalo for watching. And you have an amazing morning, afternoon, or evening. <laughs>